Hello, nature lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Society's video series. This one is how to design a science experiment. So I want to start with my science question, which we've worked a lot on making, and mine for this example is if I change the amount of fertilizer given to a plant, how does that affect the height of a plant? So the plant that I'm going to use for this is going to be a sunflower, and uh, so the first thing we need is a hypothesis. What's my prediction? If I increase the amount of fertilizer given to a sunflower, then I think the sunflower will grow taller. That's my hypothesis. So now we've got to test it. And if you remember, I had the list of factors. You know, we made our two lists, things about the sunflower and things that affect the sunflower. And this is the list that affects the sunflower. And I picked my independent variable from this list, which was grams of fertilizer given to the plant weekly. Okay, and this, um, remember I could have chosen any of these to be my independent variable, but this is the one I decided to look at was fertilizer. So I'm gonna add this all-purpose fertilizer to it and see if it changes how high it grows. But we're not done with our list. If you look at this, I put little blue tick marks on here. These are my controlled variables. These are everything that I want to keep the same in the experiment. That way, I know that if the plant gets taller, it's because of this fertilizer. It's not because the relative humidity. It's not because of the hours of sunlight, because all the plants get the same. The only thing that changes is the grams of fertilizer. But we also need something to compare to, to see if that independent variable was the cause. And if it wasn't just kind of blind chance. They would have grown that much taller anyway. So a control group is the natural state of things. So in this case, that control group would be uh, no fertilizer at all because in nature you have no fertilizer added. I mean, you might have stuff die and get decomposed, but you don't have any fertilizer added. So that's my natural state. So that's gonna be my independent variable left in the natural state. I'm going to measure how I do it, and I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to control all those other variables that had little blue tick marks on them, and I'll go through that. And I'm going to make a list of materials and safety concerns that I also need. That's the control group, not controlled variables, but controlled groups, okay? Um, so when we look at this and we look at the fertilizer, um, I'm not adding any, but um, I'm going to add... No, none of that, but I am going to measure it uh, every Monday morning at 9 o'clock from the soil to the top. The type of sunflower I'm going to use is going to be a yellow giant. Okay, so here it is. Um, I'm going to not allow any insects to be in the greenhouse with them. I'll look every week to make sure those are picked off, whether they're helpful bees or terrible uh, sunflower beetles. I'm going to grow them all in the same size container. They're all going to be 20 liter ceramic pots. My soil mix is going to be the same, and it's going to be 50% coffee grounds that have turned into compost, 10% sand, and 40% peat moss. I'll mix that together for my soil. Okay, I'm going to keep the humidity in the room the same with an automatic humidifier, and I'm going to test the amount of salt in the soil with an electroconductor meter. Okay, once I do all that, I'm going to plant the seeds the same depth at two centimeters deep so that I know exactly that they're all the same. And I'm going to check every week to make sure no weeds have sprouted up that might compete with my sunflower. So I'm going to pull those weeds as they come up. Okay, so um, that's how I'm controlling it. Now when you look at an experimental group, that we're going to compare the experimental with the control group to see if a change happened, everything is the same. You can actually cut and paste 85% of this explanation to this section. The only thing you need to change is the independent variable, which in this case we've got, I'm going to add 5 milliliters to the first group, 10 milliliters to the second group, 15 milliliters to the third group of fertilizer. And we usually try and keep them evenly spaced like that. Okay, so here it is written out. My independent variable is the amount of fertilizer added. I will add 5 milliliters of fertilizer to the first group, 10 milliliters to the second, and 15 to the third. My dependent variable is going to be how high I measure it. But you notice, even though I'm changing the fertilizer, I'm keeping all this other stuff the same. The type of seeds, the size of the container, the soil mix, uh, the amount of sand and peat moss mixed in with the compost, whether or not insects are present, the amount that I water it and when I water it, how I measure it, the salinity in the soil, the humidity in the air, all of those things are kept the same. And like I said, so you can just cut and paste that into here, okay? But that's not all you need. Once you have those two descriptions of your control group and your experimental group, 
You also need to have a materials list, which I see as things that get used up, like sunflower seeds, soil, and fertilizer. We're not going to be able to reuse those for the most part. Equipment needed are things that we can use over and over again. So ceramic pots, grow lights, humidifiers, tape measures, uh, safety pro or I'm not safety, I'm sorry, salinity probes. All those things can be used again and again and again. So those are equipment. So we need a list of both those. And then very, very important, we need safety concerns uh, listed. So in this case, I've listed allergy concerns. I've listed breathing in fertilizers, so to wear a mask. Uh, watch cords on the floor for tripping or electrical hazard, okay? Then finally, we finish by saying the procedure itself. And a lot of people say, you know, put all this crazy detail in. And I think you need to be specific. I think you need to be organized. I think you need to think through all the things that need to happen. I don't think you need to write down record data. I don't think you need to write down make graph. I don't think you need to record uh, plug in light. I think those things are implied, okay? Now at the end of all the steps, and I have 11 steps here of how to do this experiment, I've made a diagram of exactly how to measure the sunflower. I probably should have also made a diagram how to showing how to plant the seed to start with, and maybe even a third diagram to show the light above it. But diagrams help clarify. So I hope this helps. If it doesn't, please let me know the next time you see me. And if it does, I hope you have a great day. Peace out, homie.